Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into our live stream here at the Corning Museum of Glass. My name is Eric Meek, I'm the manager of hot glass programs at the museum, and this week I'm teaching an amazing class with Jeff Mack, uh, and we're focusing on cane and cups. So we're using cane in a lot of different ways, and we're making some, some nice wine glasses out of it. So that's what we're planning on today. Jeff, do you have anything to add? Well, I work for Eric here at the museum. I'm a supervisor in the hot glass programs, and uh, we're really thrilled you guys uh, tuned in to our live stream. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to make a, uh, a goblet, maybe a little bit bigger than the wine glass for this one, yeah. uh, kind of a showpiece. And it's going to have some traditional uh, Murano-style dolphins in it. And the canes that we're going to be doing. Swans. Oh, yeah, swans, sorry. Yeah. The, the flying ones, not the swimming ones. Yep. So some traditional uh, swans. And then we're going to uh, pattern the cup and the foot with uh, mesofiligrana. So again, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna get started. Pat Frost is our TA, our assistant for this class. We have some amazing students here. Still have a couple of days to go uh, and things have been going great. So we're really excited to see what everyone accomplishes. Okay, let's get started. So right. I'm gonna set up the, I've got a punny in there. I'm gonna set up the swan body. Sounds you good. Grab the punny. So the first thing's gonna be the, uh, the swans, not the dolphins. And Eric's gonna sculpt the swans. He's gonna build them on a punny. We're gonna use some gold leaf here. Uh, because it just looks really nice, puts a nice skin on it, brings it to life. Oh, here's Pat Frost. Pat, you want to say hi to the people out hi, in everybody. live stream land? <laughs> so the swans are going to be solid. And uh, Eric's just gathered up. This is going to be a pretty big swan. So we, we've been making some tall cups, some real... Uh, Fancy, fancy it's cups. Be crystal and gold for the swans. Crystal and gold, yeah. This guy post he's going to drop this one. Yes, he does. So Eric's got the clear glass set up, just coats it in the gold. Put some texture on there. So the optic mold puts those ridges on there, just adding a little bit of texture. Yep. And a while ago, Eric pulled a little cane to, uh, to make eyes for little animals like this. So once he gets the body dripped onto All right, Patrick. the end of a punty, I'll bring him over some eyes right away so he can stick them to the glass while it's fresh. Oh, we gotta, we got to put the bit on. Oh, the bit. Yeah, the bit. Yeah. So, actually, since it's a swan, we got to put a little head bit on there. I forget the steps. All right. So both Eric and I spent a lot of time uh, working with a glass artist from Murano named Elio Quariza. And, uh, He's one of the first people to show us the techniques for making these traditional animals. And it's just a lot of fun to, to work in this way. And Elio spent about 10 summers here at the Corning Museum of Glass teaching and uh, showing everybody all kinds of different Venetian techniques, his take on them. That was a real treat to get to study with him and work with him. And you can see Eric's actually got a, a shirt with a drawing that Elio did. So guys, next comes the head. Think that guy's all right, Jeff? That scale okay? It's perfect. All right. So I'm gathering up a bit of clear glass. Put some gold on there too.
while that glass was still hot, Eric was able to just touch it down to the little marina he made, a little cane at uh, chips. I've got black pupils and yellow eyes around that. Yeah, peak time. I should have saved that. Dumb. You know, maybe we'll do the tail and we'll use the rest for the beak, okay? Thank you. Can't have a swan without a fancy little tail. Nope. And then the rest of this bit he can use for the swan's beak. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. <clears throat> What's next on the swan? You guessed it. The wings. You want a new one or you want to use this? I'd like a new one, I'm sorry. So Eric and I are really lucky this week. We have a great class. And they've all got a lot of skill, so it makes it a lot more fun. But everybody knows what they're doing. Turn. Gives us the ability to show a lot more things. Is that it for that one? Yep. You can set up another another body if you want. So we're going to do two stems. So this is the one for the, the stem of the, the goblet, and then we'll do another smaller one for the lid. So we'll do a quick replay here after, after we finish this one. So just setting up the gold here while Eric finishes up the really want to keep this sort of on a swan number one central We're axis two so swans it because sits we'll nice in the stem for this piece and the, and the little have a, a of little bit of a swan on top too all right Patrick the baby swan goes on the up on the roof and that was just a little bit there So that'll go in the garage while we get the other parts going here.
just hang on to that for a second. You want to grab the funny? Thank you. You want to grab the funny from Jason? Yes. Boy, these suction tables for gold leaf are really amazing. Except that you can't move the gold around once it's laid down. So that makes it a little tricky. All right, so Eric's got the ball gathered up for another swan. How's the gold box looking there, Jeff? It's great. It's great. Except you can't scoot it around. Oh, it sticks so well. This is a, a graphite plate here. Yeah, it's interesting. That they have at the studio. It works really nice. I'm glad the gold really stays put. Coming through fast. The class was asking about setting up the swan, and really the, the difference between this and setting up a dolphin is the way you, you pre-shape the neck a little bit on the swan. You pull it out a little bit more where the neck meets the body. There's a little harder line there. Eric, are you saying you, you make the neck a little longer or thinner a, for the A little swan? bit longer. Yeah, the, on the, the dolphin, I make them a little more tapered. This is more of a yeah. hard line. So you can really see how that swan uh, is made utilizing gravity and just the heat and the flow of the glass. Eric really takes advantage of that flow to get that nice shape there. All right. Ugh. Ready when you are, Jeff.
you want to leave the the bottom of that fresh, like not crimped, so you can get in there with your shears and do the, the wing texture. So we were talking the other day about when you're using crimps to squeeze softly. On, in this case, on the bottom edge, you don't want to squeeze it at all. You want to leave a little row down there that's nice and soft to get in there with your get in there with your uh, shears on an angle and get some little feather pattern going on. Turn. Oh, sorry, you were right. And also, you know, this is a very definitely one where you want to cut it at an angle rather than, whereas yesterday I used a diamond shears to cut off the fin bits on a dolphin because I didn't want it pointed. This one I definitely want to use the straight shears to get a nice point on the tip of the wing. So now we'll just stretch this out to get some symmetry here. So these swans are going to be <clears throat> stored in the garage on the other side of the studio, and they're going to wait until we're uh, assembling the piece. And the next step, we're going to be, we're actually going to be building this on a punty uh, from the inside of the cup. So the next step will be to make the, a little stem and foot that the big swan will go on to. And that'll go uh, back into the garage with the, the big swan on it. And then it'll wait until we're finished with the cup. All right. You guys have any questions on the swan or the dolphin or anything like that so far? OK, so moving forward, we've got, we're going to put a the foot on a ball, so you're going to make the... Yep, so I'll get some gold up there for that. Yep. I'll pick up the, the cup for the foot. Yep. All right. Uh, two, side by side. So we made some... We did a cane roll up on a bubble yesterday. We pulled some cane, rolled it up on a bubble, made a long tube out of it, so... Uh, and then divided it into little sections for cup and feet. And those little chunks, I think they're called chuchi. So we've all uh, benefited a lot from the masters who work at Murano coming over here to the studio and teaching here, and sharing their knowledge. And that's really the only way we've been able to to learn these techniques is their generosity and their sharing. Now I'm just going to make a little stem, and this is what the, the big swan's going to be stuck onto. It'll be sitting on top of this little guy. Sit. <sighs> Go ahead and blow, Pat. Let's do two. Yeah. Hey Pat, do you want to? Do you mind grabbing my my jacks and my um, long diamond shears on my bag there? All 
All right, so while, while he's doing that, I'm just gonna show you this. This is the one of the tubes. So we broke off probably 15 tubes from this one cane pickup. So this is just one of the little sections of tube that I'm gonna heat in a little bit, gather over, twist up, and prepare the foot for, for Jeff. We have um, amethyst covering white, covering enamel white uh, cane in the piece here. So the bolio. And that's what the foot will be attached to. And we'll do a little bit right there for the dolphin to sit in the a little uh, rosette on. Oops. Okay. Do a little bit in there. Okay. You might give me a little air. Okay. Go ahead and blow, please. Blow hard. Stop. Okay, that's good. That's all I need. You might give me a little air. Yeah. All right, go ahead and blow, please, Pat. Stop. Okay, again, please. Stop. All right, so Eric's got that foot set. He'll bring it over. We'll drop it right on the tip of this stem. You all set, Jeff? Yep. Hello? So we're going to make the, the stem of the foot here, and then this will go into the garage, and we'll put everything together on the on the punty then. Pat, do you want to pick that? Are you cup. picking that up? Okay. You want to do anything on the lip of that, or just? I don't know. Should we? Probably not. Nah. Okay. So Pat's already working on getting the getting the bubble picked up for the for the cup of the piece. The um, the chuchi the chuchi the the Choo -choo. cup of cane. 
Chucho. A tube. <laughs> the tube. A <laughs> tube. So Eric, what do you what do you think of the class so far? How do you think everybody's doing? Everybody's doing great. The class has been fun. I think um, uh, the uh, the fancy the fancy wine glasses is a is a great goal, but really the our goal for the class is to really teach um, teamwork and the, the timing that it takes to, to pull something like this off. So it's one thing to know the steps yourself. It's a whole another thing to work with your team to the point where you're all on the same page and you have timing down so everything clicks. And, and really, the thing that makes these successful is not knowing the techniques. It's making sure that everything comes together at the right sort of tempo. And it's fun to see everybody making progress in that. Indeed. And if you're not a glass maker, what I mean by that is, you know, not having, we don't want Jeff to wait too long for a punny, for example, or for, to attach this foot. You know, it all kind of needs to go right on schedule. All right. OK, so we'll get the fork and put this in the garage. Uh, put the swan on, right? Oh, you want to put the swan on now? I think so. OK. Yeah. I'll just give it to you. OK. So Eric and I uh, have worked together for quite a while. And we actually both went to Bowling Green State University and taking glass blowing. That's where I met Eric. We both got our, uh, well, no, let's see. We both started working together at a, an amusement park blowing glass about 24 years ago. 24 and, uh, years ago. Literally, that's when we started fooling around with these techniques. That's before all the internet, YouTube, live stream. What was a live stream back then? <laughs> so you want to plate up the, the bird and bring it over? Yep. Oops. Is it waxy? So Jeff already gave a shout out oh, to hey. Elio Corisa. Yeah, we, we both spent hours and hours learning from him. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've all worked with Bill Gudenrath here too. Nick, and learned a lot of. Will you bring him a blue bit here in just a minute? Tricks and a, a deeper understanding of glass. But also this morning, I brought in a, I brought in a sketchbook that I had from Alan Goldfarb, and uh, he was another one of my my teachers that I really value the time I had with him. And learning, learning a pat right behind the approach you. to the material. In the '90s, Alan took uh, in the early '90s, Alan took a, took a class out of Pilchuck with Lino and Dante and uh, Karen Willenbrink and put together an awesome sketchbook that was Jeff and my Bible when we were learning to do this kind of stuff <laughs> back in the early '90s. Okay, you want to run that bit? This is the big one, right, Pat? Yeah. All right, Jeffrey. <laughs> I'll need a uh, like a piece of sketchbook paper too to measure this. No, I want to. I'm going to take this and Try yeah, to get this in the gonna, garage pretty just straight. Just a piece so of paper. I need a doesn't have to worry about it too much when he gets it on the cup. That's great. Just, you can leave it right there.
All right, Pat, you got that hook. So while Eric's finishing that up, I'm going to start on the cup here. Pat's picked up the tube for the cup. I'm just gonna coat that in clear glass. Let that heat sink into that tube. And then I'll be able to twist it up nicely. Do you guys have any questions so far? There's no one here with a computer, so I'm sorry if you're watching us live. This is, sometimes we have the, have the computer in here so we can answer online questions as well. Only live today here. These guys are paying for the class, so you get that privilege. The nice thing about you know, this system of picking up pre-made cane cups is you, know, you have a beautiful pattern. It goes really quickly. You do one cane pickup, you can make three or four goblets out of it. So you pick up the cup, put a fresh skin of glass on it, it really heats the cup up, so it moves along pretty quickly. You have one in there for the lid too, right? Yes. Go ahead and blow. Yep, blow. You like the counterweight inside that plenty to finish it up on, or that little heavier one? I think the heavier one, probably. Okay. All right, let's do an abolio. Abolio. We'll do this one for the last plenty. You gonna use that one? Yeah, use that if you want, it's fine. I'll bring this stem over, Pat. Yep. See if we can get this. So it's really neat to think of, uh, you know, all the incredible glass makers who've 
worked here in this studio right here. And uh, just having the ability to learn from them right here at, at the Corning Museum of Glass and, um, you know, kind of being able to carry on the teaching of these traditional techniques with our own little spin on it. It's a lot like uh, making music, you know, playing jazz. You can improvise on a standard form no matter where you're from. this out quite a bit. Just remove a lot of the extra weight. Put this cup on a diet. Hey, Dan, can you come over here for just a minute? Sure. I just wanted to point this out um, because timing is so essential with these objects. Um, right now, Jeff is just going to finish up the, the top of that. So at this point, Eric mold, is. But it's time to. Time oh, to sorry, get the, we're talking over the each swan other. out. So I just want to tip He's this He's getting over, the stem ready, and he'll put and that on a, a tack punny. Transfer punny. So that we can um, attach this on to the bottom. The this. That's on the and bottom we didn't just leave top. it in there on so the punny because. Pat and I will be flipping those punnies. They're in the garage too long and become really, really firmly attached. You could probably use and one so of those counterweights, actually. We knocked it off the punny, set it in here. Yeah, We're going to punny so. it back up just with a light transfer punny so we can finish this whole piece off, punty it inside of the cup that Jeff is just working on. All right, thanks, Dan. Okay. There's, there's one here. It's maybe been that together. So a lot of the techniques that we're using today are from 19th century Venice and also carried on in, in Murano uh, by some incredible artists. Davide Fouin comes to mind. Definitely influenced what Eric and I are doing here. We both studied with him. He carries on this tradition right there in Murano. He even teaches classes. So if you're really into this stuff, and there, see, I learned that trick from Michael Shunky. So we can all learn from each other, riff off of each other. And it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. It's very helpful. So I, I did that because I'm going to be making a lid and we're doing it right away. So we won't be doing the lid tomorrow. We'll be doing it today. So now I have a great little mark on there. I know exactly the diameter of that lip. Thanks, Michael. Will you throw open the door over here? Thanks. It depends. Let's get these open. All right, so we're about ready to connect. The lunar landing module to the command module. Wait a minute. Ready, Eric? Yep. Okay, Pat.
Oops. Throw in the garage, Pat. Right over to the garage. So we're gonna fix that. So it's not done yet. Got it. Cup out, Pat. So got to play it cool. There we go. So that we can save the piece without it being all crooked. Cuz it definitely needs straightened out. So my inside punty might have been a little small. And the uh, punty for the 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 uh, swan maybe a little big. But it's okay. We don't do this every day. No damage. It's gonna be just fine. Is the door open? No. Right back at it. Oh! We lose it? We lost it. We got some of it. So, what do we do here? Well, it lasted for a little bit. So you want to throw another cup on it? Now that the uh, the goose the goose is cooked. The goose is cooked. All right. Well, um, let's just throw. Let's make the lid anyway. Okay. And uh, and we'll pretend that's still in one piece. <laughs> Sound <laughs> Sounds good. good. Sounds All right. good. You up for that, Jeff? You good? Yep. Well, that's a bummer, but it happens. And uh, we, you know, we thought we were making it look a little too easy. So, what's that? We thought we were making it look a little too easy. So, yeah, sort That's of right. planned. We, we planned it out, you know, just for the entertainment factor. Well, this is a class. That's right. You know. And so there are some. We can use the parts for this. It probably needs a new. Uh, it's swan. important to know that part of the learning process is breaking glass. But there's definitely some usable parts here. So what what happened with the punny? Do you think? Uh, I think a little hard on the yours, bottom. Yours was big. Mine was small. Yeah. And you know, the rest is history. Yep. Can't win them all. It's, it looked good before it went down, though. Yeah, it did. I think the other the other important thing that you know we've we've learned from working with Elio and Davide and Alan and Bill it's just that um, so we'll make a lid and then don't panic when we have time know, this week we'll make we another got that cup in the garage, to go with so the lid. There's a good chance we'd have another go at it, but it didn't work out. But still, panicking never helps. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna move on with the lid, as if that were still in one piece. So we got the got the bubble set up there with the cane in it. You go, Jeffrey. You know, um, should we do the should we do a, a like a little ball to set the dolphin on? Sure, sure. Just in gold. Do you want to do you want to like yeah, pun, punny yeah, this up on that? Yeah, we'll punny up on the ball, okay. like a little squatty. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, I put that little, well, you probably saw it, the little, I mean, the swan's got to sit on water. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm going to try not to let it get to me that we lost that beautiful piece. We're just going to pretend it worked out. <laughs> I've got my measurement. Yes. Yep. The one you know, thing sometimes it is nice to measure the lid first, so. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Back, always back to the furnace. A little more of that, thanks. It smells like guns over here. No, we're just going on with the lid. All right. Lid time. That's right, the show must go on. surface tension. I know what it was, Eric. What's that? I wasn't chewing gum. Really? Yeah, I think so. Hello? Hello? Hello, Hodge. Yep. Go ahead, Pat. Okay. It's amazing how that gold stays put, stays put on the graphite. Yeah, give him a, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be all right, just making a little ball. Thank you. Right. All right. So when he, yeah, when he's ready, we're gonna use that as the punty. 
So Eric's making a little ball so the uh, swan has something to sit on. And we'll just attach that with a little CA, a little disc, transitional disc. got some graphite chokes in the in my little gray bin in the back. And there's a gray bin sitting in front of a mat next to the You wanna press this right into the hot bit or say again? Do you want to punty onto this or not? Yeah, let's punty right onto that. Okay. No so bit? I'll give it to you. Well we'll put a bit on there. Yeah. Just a little disc. Alright, Pat. So Eric will bring that ball just as if it were a punty. And then we'll use this bit to glue that on there. So a lot of lids that that you make or I make have uh, a fold in them. This this style does not. It's just the contour of the, the piece makes a nice lid to sit inside of a, a bowl. Yeah, on that hemispherical bowl, the ones with just the yeah. bulge out looks really nice. And one of the coolest things about these techniques, I think, is uh, you know how they figured out the connections. You don't see us picking up a torch or uh, you know using a torch to, to do the, the fusings. And if you think about it, uh, in you know in the 1800s, it, they didn't have really they weren't using oxypropane torches to connect these things. Not so that there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it, but. I find it part of the fun in trying to figure out how to make sure you have strong connections but still and, and not use a torch. Part of the fun of this style of working is that you never know if it's really gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, Unless you're David A. Queen. Inle yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless you've done it thousands of times. But it's, 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 um, it's somewhere between uh, playing music and playing a sport, I would say. that out just a little bit more.
Almost, one more time. You got the duck on the plate? Yeah. All right. You want to bring the duck or you want to bring the inside punny? Uh, I'll bring the punny this time. Okay. Just for variety's sake. Is that going to fit? Yep. It's going to fit our imaginary cup just fine. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to get the, uh, make a little ridge on there. All right. And then we'll do the inside punny. We only have five seconds till noon. Are we going to go dark? Nice. Now, now we're rushing. Rushing. I think we're fine. I see Harry's computer. It's still on. Oh, there's the corning noon whistle. If you've never been in corning, there's still a factory whistle at noon. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> sort of. You know what, Eric? I'd like to open this just a little bit more. All right. I'll Sorry. get a different one. Let me just get a uh, quick paddle, though. It does look nice. We'll, we'll have to make a couple of this. Yeah, for sure. Yes? Yep. All right, so finial time, and the finial's the little swan that Eric made towards the beginning of the demo. Hang on a sec. All right, let's do a little rosette. This isn't the glue though, right? This is just the uh, swan water. Swamp water. Ready, Pat? That would have been a very grandiose piece. It would have been. Maybe too grandiose. That's what I'm thinking. We'll so as we're wrapping up here, uh, just a little advertising to check out Frost Glass on Instagram. Jeff Max spelled backwards. And Meek Hot Glass. We're going to be posting images of the things we're making this week here in the class. 
and you can even see some other cool things that we made working here at the Corning Museum of Glass. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking in, checking out the class, spending some time with us. That's why they took them out. There we go. Into the oven.